Hey, this is Mr. Mason Ann, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to solve ratio problems, including ratio word problems. Well, this first problem is asking us to state the ratio of trapezoids to parallelograms. And because trapezoids is stated first, we have to count the number of trapezoids first. And we have four trapezoids. And we compare that to the number of parallelograms, which is three. And a ratio of four to three cannot be simplified, so this is our final answer. Now a ratio can be stated with the two numbers separated with a colon or with the word two or with a fraction bar. But we should understand with this example here, four to three is not a fraction. This is not four out of three. If this was four out of three, that would mean that the bottom number would be a total and it, it is not. This is a part to part ratio. Okay, let's go to number two. All right, number two reads that in a flower vase, Leslie has three roses, five tulips, and four carnations. What is the ratio of roses and tulips to the total number of flowers? So the first thing that we have to do is add the number of roses to tulips. And we have three roses and five tulips for a total of eight. And we have to compare that to the total number of flowers. So if we add three roses to the five tulips to the four carnations, that would give us a total of 12 flowers. So our initial ratio is eight to 12, but this ratio can be simplified. So what you do when you simplify a ratio is you just find the greatest common factor of the two numbers. And the largest number that can be equally divided into eight and 12 is four. Four can go into eight two times, and four can be divided into 12 three times. So the ratio of roses and tulips to the total number of flowers is two to three. All right, let's do the next problem. All right, in this problem, we have to determine the ratio of circles to triangles. So we have to count the circles first, and we have eight of them, and then we count the triangles next, and we have 12 of them. And a ratio of 8 to 12 can be simplified to 2 to 3. Because 4 is the greatest common factor of 8 and 12. So we divide 4 into each one of these numbers. Now, if you take a look here, we could just divide this picture into four equal groups. And notice inside each group, we have a total of two circles and three triangles. And remember when we reduce this ratio by a factor of four, the greatest common factor that you divide into each one of these numbers will also tell you how many equal groups you can divide your total into. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four groups, each with two circles and three triangles. All right, let's go to number four. All right, for this problem, we have to determine the ratio of cubes to square pyramids. So we have to count the number of cubes first, and we have a total of 16 cubes, and we have a total of eight square pyramids. All right, now the greatest common factor of 16 and eight is eight. So we divide eight into 16, which is two, and we divide eight into itself, which of course is one. So we could say that there are exactly two cubes for every individual square pyramid. And we can even demonstrate this. Like for example, here are two cubes for one square pyramid, two more cubes for another square pyramid, two to one, two to one. And then we have these two here for this one, these two here for this one, these two here for this one, and these two here for this one. So the ratio in this problem is a ratio of two to one. All right, on to number five. All right, for this problem, we have to figure out the ratio of triangle A's area to triangle B's area. So let's start with triangle A. The base of triangle A is from this point to this point, and it has a length of four. And the height of triangle A is from this point to this point, and it has a height of six. And for triangle B, its base is a length of eight, and
and its height is a length of 3. So to find the area of triangle A, we just multiply the base times its height, and we divide that product by 2. And for triangle B, we're going to multiply 8 times 3, and divide that product by 2 as well. So 4 times 6 is 24, and breaking that in half would give us an area of 12 square units. And for this triangle, or triangle B, 8 times 3 is also 24, and 24 divided by 2 would also yield us 12 square units. So the ratio of the area of triangle A as compared to triangle B is 12 to 12, which can be simplified to 1 to 1. So we have a 1 to 1 ratio of the areas of these two triangles. Whenever you have identical numbers in your ratio, it will always be simplified to a ratio of 1 to 1. All right, let's go on to the next problem. All right, this problem reads that a classroom has a 1 to 1 ratio of girls to boys. If there are 28 students in the class, how many boys are in the class? All right, so because we have a 1 to 1 ratio of girls to boys, that means we have an identical amount of girls and boys in this class. And if there are 28 students in the class, that just simply means we can cut this number in half, giving us 14 girls and 14 boys, which would be a 1 to 1 ratio. So really, this problem can be accomplished through mental math. So we could say that there are 14 boys in the class straight off the bat. However, if you wanted to show work, we could create a ratio table. We could write a G for girls and B for boys. And I like to put a third category, which is a T for total. And then what I do is I create the lines to construct my table. And then I like to plug in the given ratio into the ratio table. And the problem states that there is one girl for every boy. And if we were to add that one girl to that one boy in one individual group, that would give us a total of two. And then what we would do is we would take the 28 total students and put that in the total category. And then what we would do is we would examine the two numbers in the total column and see by what factor did that number increase by. Well, to get from 2 to 28, we would have to multiply that by 14. And in a ratio table, all other cells right next to the number must increase by the same factor. So this 1 would have to increase by a factor of 14, which is 14. And this one would as well, so that would also be 14. However, this is a problem that you probably could do mentally. As long as you know that a 1 to 1 ratio means the same amount, you could take the total and just cut that in half. So in this case, 14 boys is the answer. All right, let's go to number 7. So a fruit basket contains a total of 12 apples and 16 oranges. What is the ratio of apples to oranges? So the problem is asking for apples first. So we have to write 12 first. And we have 16 oranges. And all we have to do now is express this answer in simplest form. Now the greatest common factor of 12 and 16 is 4, but something I've noticed in the past is many students want to reduce by a factor of 2, which you can start out by doing, but that will not give you the answer in simplest form. So let's go ahead and just divide both of these by 2. So if we cut 12 in half, that would be 6. And if we cut 16 in half, that would be 8. Now we should notice that a ratio of 6 to 8 is not in simplest form because both of those numbers share a common factor of 2. So we can go ahead and divide both of these numbers by 2 again. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the ratio of apples to oranges would be 3 apples for every 4 oranges. Now, if you were to take your ratio that you got at the beginning and divide by the GCF, which is the greatest common factor, that would give you the answer in simplest form right away. So if we were to recognize that 4 is the greatest number that goes into both of these, we would say that 4 goes into 12 three times, and 4 goes into 16 four times for a simplified ratio of 3 to 4. 
All right, let's do another example. All right, this problem reads that Mrs. Pryor's class has a total of 24 students. 18 of the students are boys. What is the ratio of girls to boys in Mrs. Pryor's class? Now, the problem is asking us to find the ratio of girls to boys. And because girls are being asked for first, I'm going to write a G for girls first and a B for boys second. And then I'm going to put a T here for total in my ratio table. All right. Now, the number 18 given in the problem are the number of boys. So we're going to write the number 18 in the boys column. And the number 24 represents the total number of students, which would be girls and boys added together. Which means the number of girls must be 6, because the only thing you can add to 18 to make 24 would be 6. Now what we have to do is express as a ratio the number of girls to boys in Mrs. Pryor's class. And there are 6 girls and 18 boys. So all we have to do is find the greatest common factor so we can write this in simplest form. And 6 is the largest number that can fit into 6 and into 18. 6 goes into 6 one time, and 6 goes into 18 three times. And we could even reduce this total if we wanted to. 6 goes into 24 four times. And notice that one girl plus three boys would give us a total of four students in one group. But they just want us to state the ratio of girls to boys, which in this case is one girl for every three boys in Mrs. Pryor's class. All right, let's go on to the next example. All right, on a math quiz, the ratio of problems Jaden answered correctly to incorrectly was 3 to 1. If there was a total of 16 problems on the quiz, how many problems did Jaden answer correctly? Well, they state right off the bat that the ratio of problems answered correctly to incorrectly was 3 to 1. Because they give us the number correct first, I'm going to write a C for correct and then an I for incorrect. And then I'm going to put a T for total. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the given ratio into our table. And because the amount correct was given first, the first number in our ratio, 3, is the amount correct. And the second number is the number of problems answered incorrectly. So that would mean out of a total of four problems, three were correctly answered and one was incorrectly answered. Now the problem goes on to say that there was a total of 16 problems. So we have to put 16 problems in this column. Now whenever you can find two numbers in a ratio table, what you do is you have to figure out by what factor did the number increase or decrease. In this case, the number gets bigger, so there is a factor increase. And 4 gets 4 times bigger, so we have to increase 1 by a factor of 4 and 3 by a factor of 4. 1 times 4 is 4, and 3 times 4 is 12. So out of 16 total problems, Jaden correctly answered 12 of them and incorrectly answered 4 of them. However, the problem wants us to state how many problems did he answer correctly. So this is the only number we are concerned with. So we would say that Jaden answered 12 problems correctly. All right, let's go on to our last problem. All right, this problem reads that the ratio of boys to girls in Mrs. Ritter's class is 2 to 3. If there are 15 girls in her class, how many students are there in Mrs. Ritter's class altogether? So when we construct our ratio table, we are going to write B first for boys and G second for girls because that is the order in which the two units are given. So boys first and then girls. And I like to put total on the end. All right, so the given ratio of boys to girls in this problem is two boys for every three girls, which means in one individual group, that would be a total of five students. Now the problem states that there are 15 girls in the class. So in the girls category, we have to put 15 here. Now once you get two numbers in any given column, you can examine the relationship between those two numbers to determine the factor increase of one number to the next. 
And to get from 3 to 5, that would be an increase by a factor of 5. So because 3 was multiplied by 5, we have to multiply 2 by 5, which is 10, and 5 by 5, which is 25. And then the two parts should equal the whole, or your total. And 10 plus 15 does equal 25. Now the problem is asking us, how many students are there in the class altogether? So the number we're concerned with is the total, which is 25. So we would say that there are 25 students all together in Mrs. Ritter's class. All right, so there you have it. We just went over how to solve 10 different kind of problems involving ratio. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can become informed as new math tutorials become available.